Fellow Kenyans, yesterday I cautioned you that our numbers are likely to rise. Today, we have a new high of 47 persons who have tested positive to the disease. Thus, Kenya now has 581 people who, are, who have tested positive from the beginning. In today's number, 32 persons are from Mombasa, while 11 are from Nairobi. We now have two cases in Busia, one in Kiambu, and one in Kwale. Again, the cases in uh, Mombasa are mainly in Old Town with 18 cases, 18 additional cases being from uh, the Old Town and five additional cases here in Nairobi again going to Isli. In terms of number, in terms of gender, once again, we have 31 who are male and 16 who are, who are female. We are also lucky today that uh, we have released eight persons. Eight persons have been discharged, which brings the number of discharged persons to 190. On a sad note, though, I want to inform you that we have lost an additional two persons from coronavirus disease in Mombasa, bringing this number to bringing the the number of deceased persons to 26. But of more serious concern regarding those diseased persons is that both of them, aged 68 and 72 respectively, actually passed away at home. Now, I'm going to allow Dr. Amos, uh, after, after my speech, to talk to the danger of uh, persons passing away at home because it means that a lot of other people can get infected that way. Let me also say this. We have got one patient in Kenyatta National Hospital who traveled from Tanzania through Loitoktok, traveled with Matatos, etc., etc., and uh, is now in Kenyatta National Hospital. This person did not come through the, the border points, but came through Panya routes. Now, the, the problem with this is that the citizens, as I have said before, we Kenyans, the people in those areas, are the ones who should actually have reported the sighting of this gentleman. Because, as we well know, the borders are porous, they are, they are lengthy areas, and it is very difficult for police on their own to be able to monitor who is coming across the various areas that um, we have mentioned. And therefore, when that happens, is it, it is the population that is going to suffer. As I alluded yesterday, we have identified some epicenters where the numbers have continued to grow. These are especially Isli in Nairobi and Old Town Mombasa. The situation in those areas has now become of serious concern. In order to contain the spread of infection in these two particular areas, the government has recommended that further containment measures will be followed. Subsequently and pursuant to Rule 3 of the Public Health COVID-19 restriction of movement of persons and related measures, Rules 2020, Legal Notice 50, the Ministries of Health and that of Interior Coordination of National Government have directed as follows. There shall be cessation of movement 
in and out of Isli area of Nairobi with effect from today, the 6th of May 2020, at 7 p.m. for the next 15 days. There shall be cessation of movement in the area known as Old Town in Mombasa, with effect from today, the 6th of May at 7 p.m. for the next 15 days. There will be closure of any markets, any restaurants, and eateries within those two areas. That is the area of Isili in Nairobi and Old Town in Mombasa, with effect from 6 May 2020 at 7 p.m. for the next 15 days. Further, the government has also said that the cost of targeting testing and, quarantine and government quarantine facilities shall be met by the government. Kenyans should therefore forthwith not be afraid. Let me repeat that. Effective today, effective today, Government quarantine facilities will be occupied by those told to do so by the Ministry of Health. We will be given that facility free of charge. This is to facilitate those who may feel that they do not want to go for testing because of the cost of quarantine. That is no longer the case. These measures are not intended to punish anybody in those affected areas. Rather, these measures are supposed to protect those in those areas who may get the disease from movement of persons. Now, let me explain what that means. It therefore means that movement within those areas, when you are going to buy something, when you are going to uh, uh, unnecessary outing for a few people, if you are going to shop, then you can do so. What you cannot do is to leave the area to go to another area. And uh, this will be clarified, the, the, the specific geographical locations will be clarified in the order by the Ministry of Interior Coordination and National of uh, Interior and Coordination of National Government. Public transportation is not allowed to go into those areas. Again, for the same reason that um, we have given. And as I, as I said, and I want to make it clear, is that this cessation of movement is essentially to protect those within those areas and those in the rest of the towns from infection. As we continue to provide protective equipment to our healthcare workers, I also want to urge institutions to be accountable, accountable for what they have received. We have observed that some unscrupulous individuals are selling PPEs when delivered to their institutions. I want one that such individuals will be arrested and face criminal charges because that is theft. And not, not only is it theft, it is theft at a very, very bad time. Before I, I, I proceed, there are other measures that we have taken in Mombasa, particularly to do with the area of transportation. And I want to invite uh, C.S. Macharia to talk to those issues. Uh, thank you very much, uh, C.S. Kagwe. Like we said before, uh, public transportation is a very key area in terms of both transmission, but also facilitating economic development. And so we do take measures all the time to make sure that um, what needs to be done to mitigate any risks which come as a result of transportation system, they are addressed 
on a timely basis. And so I'd like to say the following. You've heard before about the risk of having the truck drivers, especially the ones carrying cargo into the region, transmitting the virus, say from Mombasa, going to the west in Malaba, and going to other countries in the region. And so, as a region, we have agreed that henceforth, all truck drivers leaving, for example, our country, going to the neighboring countries, have to be tested at least 48 hours before they leave Nairobi or Mobasa. That is important because by the time they get to Malaba, they have to show the certificate that they are COVID-19 free, and that will be mandatory. That also applies to drivers coming from other regions like Uganda and Rwanda. When they get to the border with Kenya, they must produce a COVID-free certificate before they are let into our country. And so, because of this, we would like to also require that all drivers going into Mobasa port, all drivers going to Nairobi ICD, all drivers going to Naivasha ICD to carry transit goods before they are let in into those facilities, before they are let into Port of Mobasa, ICD Nairobi, or ICD Naivasha, they must produce that COVID-free certificate. Otherwise, they, are, they will not be allowed to get into the port. Secondly, they have to be tested, like we said before, every 14 days. Every 14 days, so the certificate will be valid for only 14 days. Thereafter, they must show that it's actually been renewed. Let me also say, like what Waziri has said about the port of Mobasa. The port, as you know, has been identified as one of the hot spots. Before COVID, Mobasa port was employing 6,200 people, members of staff. And so what we decided now and given directives is that only the core business, only the core functions will remain at the port of Mobasa. And this is loading of cargo from the ships and also loading cargo onto the ships for exports. And so the number of employees at the port of Mobasa has been reduced from 6,200 to 4,000. The rest of the staff have been asked to stay home, in addition to the ones we've asked to stay home before. For example, we had insisted that anybody below, uh, above, sorry, above 58 years had to stay home, even if he or she was in a core mandate, core function. And then secondly, we have insisted the other hygiene issues had to be followed very diligently. Washing of hands, sanitizers, non-use of lifts, all those other interventions still continue. Let me also, Waziri, briefly mention about the commuter rail. As you know, we have taken certain measures for matatus. But for the commuter rail, which carries between 40 and 50,000 people every day, that was also identified like a major uh, risk area in terms of transmission. And so what we've done in the last few weeks, we have introduced 40 additional coaches, 40 additional coaches in addition to the 60 which was there before. So this will help in terms of complementing the transport by Matatus and therefore having no excuse for not having social distancing in terms of people using the train and people using the, the matatus. Also, as you know, uh, a week ago we introduced uh, what we are calling sanitizer tunnel. Anybody boarding the train must go through that tunnel to make sure they are sanitized and to make sure that they don't carry the virus into the train. And then lastly, another area of major risk has been the ferry, Rikoni ferry. And social distancing has been one of the key interventions we have now introduced a brand new ferry which arrived on the 25th of April, which will be commissioned tomorrow to start operations. 
And therefore, there is no excuse whatsoever for people not ensuring their social distancing. Because of economic development is critical for us to finance some of these critical aspects which uh, C.S. Mutagi Kagwe has mentioned, we have also ensured that we continue exporting uh, our flowers, our horticultural produce, and that's why, in addition to the facilities provided by Kenya Airways, we have approached 12 other airlines to make sure they can complement the two freighters which are owned by Kenya Airways. This will make, su make sure that the 350,000 jobs in the flower sector, in the, in the fresh produce, is accurately sustained. And we are discussing how this additional uh, capacity will be implemented through this additional 12 airlines which we have agreed that they supplement in terms of uh, airlifting uh, the cargo for the, few, for the external destinations. Thank you, Waziri. Uh, Santa Sana. Um, uh, one or more, one or two additional issues. One of them has got to, has got to do with um, the arrival of uh, some patients. Arrangements have been made for those people who had, who had gone to India at their own costs. Let me add, at their own costs. Um, uh, some patients will be returning home, I believe, today. And I want to repeat the protocol that we have adopted for returning patients. We have said that all patients coming home will not be quarantined. Instead, they will be allowed by, and, and signed for by their doctors so that they can be able to be quarantined by their own doctors in premises that their doctors determine uh, are sufficient to deal uh, with that particular challenge. So we don't want uh, speculation to say so-and-so was released, so-and-so was not. It is persons who are released to their doctors. They are the ones who are given that uh, uh, permission. So there will be those people. Secondly, it's just to add that we have noticed also the, the issue of the curfew. And I want to urge, I want to urge that people do not break the curfew laws or the curfew regulations. Because severe action will be taken against them. And I just want to reiterate, please stay at home after 7 p.m. And in addition to that, we are asking our citizens, as we had done earlier, if you do not have to work from an office, if you do not have to work from an office, work from home. And as I said, it is important for us to do this. It is important for us to practice this. Because for those people who have been saying lockdown, lockdown, essentially that is what it would mean. It would mean that you all, that every person works from home. So we might as well, before a lockdown, or rather than announce a lockdown, we might as well just stay at home and work from home. And we have reiterated this. So I, 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 Duguzetu, Nandalezetu, wale ambao wako area hii zile niritaja, area ya Isili hapa Nairobi, area ya Old Town, pale Mombasa, tunajua ya kwamba, yale maneno tumetenda, itakuwa nguvu kidogo kwenu, ngumu kidogo, kwa sababu mtu hawezi kufanya vile amezoea, na vile hufanya kila siku. Lakini, Ni lazima tulinde watu, ni lazima tulinde wa Kenya pali popote walipo. Na sisi tunajua, watu wakifuata sheria, wakifanya vile tunasema, hii virusi itakwamishwa hapo ndani dio wale ambao wameumbukezo na hiyo virusi, wawekwe katika quarantine facility, wakati huo huo, kutakuwa na testing, itaongezwa huko hizo area, area ya isli, Tumekuwa huko tukifanya testing, diyo tumeelewa ya kwamba hiko hiyo shida. Vile vile, tunatembea area zingine, tunajua na tunaendelea kufanya testing, area ya kawangware, na pia tunaangalia ni area zingine. Na tukiona, tukiona viruzi imezidi, hizo, hizo area ni lazima tunafanya 
vile tumefanya na hapa na area za Isili na 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 Old Town Mombasa. Kwa hivyo e, tunawasihi watu tafadhali tafadhali tufuate sheria tafadhali tufanye vile serikali inasema kwa sababu ni tunataka serikali inataka kuona mema akifanyika hatutaki kuona watu wa kikim, watu wa, wa kikufa, wakiwa nyumbani kwa sababu wanaogopa kupelekwa quarantine tafadhali tafadhali ukiwa mgonjwa ukijisikia unasikia ugonjwa tafadhali nenda hospitali kwa sababu mgonjwa yeyote lazima alindwe na, na akiwa ni mama analindwa na mzee akiwa ni mzee analindwa na mama basi na yeye pia atapata virusi kwa hivyo tafadhalini tafadhalini wacheni tusikize vile wizara ya afya inasema na vile serikali inavyosema i can take one or we can take one or two questions yeah yeah oh yeah i'll i'll give him a chance Good afternoon. You can see you can reply all of them. My name is Leila Mohamed from NTV. Please clarify on the point of cessation of movement within Isli and Old Town in Mombasa, particularly during the day. Does this mean they don't leave their houses? Which particular businesses will be closed? We know Isli particularly is a business hub. How will this all work out for those who will be affected to understand clearly how this will be done and whether there will be any repercussions for those found walking around during the day the order will be very clear the order will be given by the, as i said by the ministry concerned they will give an order but effectively what it means is that uh, you cannot go into isili and persons within isili cannot leave the area of isili however within those areas there will be um, uh, certain if the, as i said the eateries the the the, the, the malls those ones will be closed or throughout that that period of 15 days and mass testing will be continuing it doesn't mean that that uh, you have to stick into your house within the area you can walk but we are urging people not to leave their premises what we don't want to do is to lock people inside their houses but we are saying as much as possible stay within the house and um, send somebody move out only when you must to get uh, something or, 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 or whatever. But visitations, gatherings, anything of the kind must not continue. Yes, ma'am. Uh, Stephen Leto here. Um, there, there is concern that uh, some of the patients who turn positive or some of the people who turn positive do not show the signs of COVID. In the numbers, for instance, announced today, the 47, what is the, uh, the percentage of asymptomatic patients and the vice okay. versa? Yeah. You'll deal with that. Uh, Nancy Okwara from KBC. Uh, my first question is to CS Masharia. You've talked of the reduction of the workforce, uh, especially at the Ports Authority. What will be the implication, especially on uh, the output? And are the members of staff that are going home going to be paid? So I need you to clarify if it's paid leave or what happens. And also the next question is to CS Kagwe. Uh, in terms of the cessation of movement, especially in, in and out of Isli, uh, you may find out that some people may have already started moving out of the estates before 7 p.m. So do you think it's going to be effective? Well, uh, to start with, my, 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 my answer would be that, um, that, I mean, unless you are moving out to go and live somewhere else, you leave your house, you know, it's, I don't understand how, where would you live if you live if you leave your house. Uh, but of course, as you know very well, understanding and knowing Kenyans, it will not surprise me in the least. However, you are not helping anybody and you are not helping yourself. I've just explained what happened to this gentleman from, um, uh, from Tanzania, the one who traveled from Tanzania, and how he has infected persons we are still tracing, you know, in and out of there. So if you have a colleague who is in Isili, lives in Isili as we are speaking, to come and stay with you, you would be an extremely foolish person to accept that that person comes and stays with you and they have not taken a test. So it is you who would be exposing yourself to the virus. So I would expect responsibility. I would expect people to behave. I would expect that um, 
uh, persons within those areas would themselves want to stay there and take a test to protect themselves and to protect their friends and family? Uh, yes, um, that issue about KPA, uh, like I said, the numbers have been reduced from 6,200 to 4,000. In fact, the target is to go as down as 3,500. And what I said was um, we want to limit to only the core functions. So output of the core functions will not go down because the core functions is about operator, operations of the port. Cargo coming in, all the ships are offloaded, and all the ships going are loaded with cargo. That output will not change. In fact, we like it to go up. However, any auxiliary services which are not critical to the port, those are the ones you've said, those people should actually stay at home. And whether they'll be paid or not, the issue is where possible, they'll be taking leave. If it's not possible, during this period, KPA will actually pay them because um, it is not their fault that we have this situation, but hopefully we shall not go for too long. So the numbers will come down. Those who are going home, they'll be paid, but we're only limiting ourselves at the port only on the core functions, which is operations. Cargo in, cargo out. You take the questions. Thank you, CS Kagwe, CS Masharia. Uh, just to highlight you, today we have 222 patients admitted in various facilities throughout the Republic. Out of these 222, one is in critical care at the Kenyatta University Teaching Research and Referral Hospital on mechanical ventilatory support. Four at the Coast Provincial Hospital are on oxygen, supplemental oxygen. The rest are in stable condition and we look forward to their discharge home in the coming few days. Uh, allow me also to digress and mention this matter of the home or community-based deaths. In the past uh, one or two weeks, we have realized uh, increased cases of deaths at the community level or patients dying upon reaching the accident and emergency unit, especially in uh, Mombasa. And the risk posed by this is usually these are critically ill people. They are usually symptomatic of COVID-19. And therefore, they are, supposed, they are likely to be shedding very high levels of the COVID-19 virus, therefore making them extremely infectious, especially for those who are close to them, like family members who are taking care of them, or relatives and friends who could come in the spirit of the African culture to visit and condole with a sick person. So our appeal, especially to our colleagues, our friends at the coast, is to ensure that you call 719 in case you are feeling unwell. We still remember the symptoms of COVID-19. One is a dry cough. The other is running a temperature of high fever and also difficult in breathing. If you experience any of these symptoms, please call 719. And remember, we have ambulances also stationed in Mombasa which can quickly respond through the rapid response teams to be able to pick you and take you for health care attention. In terms of the numbers reported today, the 46, because this is a small fraction, almost 90% of them were asymptomatic, meaning these were people who were just picked by routine targeted testing. It's only 10 of them or so, 10% of them were exhibiting symptoms. And many of them were also exhibiting very mild symptoms. Remember also we are in the flu season. Kenya has two flu uh, peaks. One is from March to May, and the other one starts from around July to September. So it is very difficult to be able to distinguish the ordinary flu from COVID-19 symptoms because they have a similar symptomatology. So it's better to err on the side of caution. Even if you think you have ordinary flu, please call 719 and you'll be given assistance. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.